Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy TB. As always, you already know who it is, what time it is. And we finally made it to the NBA postseason. This video is going to be a bit different than what I've done the past year and a half or so. We're going to have some 2K gameplay over this. I had some requests for it. And if you followed the channel from the very, 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 very beginning, and this is talking further than NBA talks, you would know we did gaming before i rebranded regardless it's been a great year and to be honest this might be the first time in at least the western conference where i'm not really able to gauge who's gonna win who's gonna come out of there we have some great matchups some great matchups that are narrative driven and some great matchups that are just great matchups for basketball in general you got kd playing russ again in the first round you got sacramento golden state in the battle for northern california and you got the new look lakers taking on the young guys in Memphis. Now before we get into it, like, comment, and subscribe if you're new, and let me know who your finals prediction is, who you think is going to win, and in how many games, as well as finals MVP. With the intro out the way, let's get into it. Now obviously if you're watching this video, the Eastern Conference video, honestly I'm probably in the midst of uploading it as you hear me talking about the West. So as soon as you're done with this video, go ahead and go to my channel and check out the Eastern Conference video right after this one. But first up in the West, we got Denver and OKC. Now if OKC does lose tonight, it doesn't really matter if Minnesota does get into the first round because I do feel like the number eight team is going to lose anyway and that's with the West and the East. So Regardless, you can make the OKC Thunder a placeholder for the Minnesota Timberwolves in the event that the Timberwolves win, but I think OKC, they're going to get it. This series is going to be competitive from game to game, but in terms of the actual series outcome, it's not going to be as competitive as the game seemed. Denver has been head and shoulders above the rest of the West when it comes to how good this team is and being the team that everybody believes the West is going to go through. At Denver, pulling off a gentleman's sweep on OKC. Now, I love OKC, and you already know this. I talk about them all the time on this channel, but Denver is battle-tested. Denver is a team that has been to the Western Conference Finals. They're a team that have been the West favorites all year, and they're a team that they're not going to be an easy out by anybody. And with OKC's youth, I think Denver is going to be able to win this one pretty handedly. It all comes down to the fact that OKC just doesn't have an answer for Jokic. And when you don't have an answer for Jokic, you don't have an answer for the Nuggets offense, period. So for that series, I got Denver in five. And the next series, Memphis plays the Los Angeles Lakers. Now I'm gonna call it now. This is my first upset of the postseason. Now before you call me biased and say I'm just a Lakers fan, consider the fact that Brandon Clark, he's out. Steven Adams, he's out. Which means that leaves DPOY Jaron Jackson Jr. essentially by himself out there to guard AD, who I might add has had two phenomenal games against the Grizzlies this year. Aldama is their next tallest guy at 6'11, but with how light he is, I expect Xavier Tillman to be on AD sometimes as well as Triple J. Tillman weighs more in the 240 range, while Aldama is more of a 215, so AD, he would have his way with Aldama, whereas Tillman, he can put up a fight with regard to strength and weight. Now, during the regular season, as I said, the Lakers won the series 2-1. to one. one game, AD didn't play. In the loss that we had against them, he had 28 points and 19 rebounds. And the most recent game we played them, AD had a 30-20 and 20 game. Like I said, AD plays well against this athletic but small team. And they're even more small without Brandon Clark and Steven Adams. Based on how he's played against Memphis all year, I personally think we could trust AD so long as his health stays intact, which I think it will because it has for the better part of the end of the year. AD essentially is going to be unstoppable this series, and though it will be very competitive, and I'm not saying the Memphis Grizzlies are going to get walked off the floor, I still think the Lakers are going to get this one in six. With regard to Memphis and the rest of the Western Conference, I think the Lakers are the best team to match up with them, especially with their two backup bigs out. That leads us to the next series, and this is Sacramento and Golden State. Now, this is going to be a very exciting series in the first round, in my opinion. As I said in the beginning, this is the battle for Northern California, a game against a team that's ran the North for the better half of the decade, against a team that's looking to take the 
the throne away. Sacramento is an amazing team, but I'll be honest, I am one of the believers that their three seed is more of a product of the rest of the Western Conference dealing with injuries and other turmoil with their superstars being missing off of certain teams. In the playoffs, experience is very valuable, and Sacramento is one of those teams with the most inexperience in the playoffs. I think now is the time for Golden State to tee up a little bit, and I think they're going to take this one in seven. It's going to be a hard-fought series both ways, but the reason I think it's going to seven, it's strictly because of my distrust for Golden State's play on the road. They're horrible. They're awful on the road. Sacramento plays extremely well at home, so that's going to be tough for Golden State. But in the end all be all, with all that being said, and I know this contradicts myself, I trust Golden State to win one game in Sacramento more than I trust Sacramento to win one game in Golden State. So I think they're going to take it to seven, but I think Golden State, they're going to pull off one of those wins in Sacramento. This brings us to our four or five matchup, which is Phoenix and the Clippers. Now, this one is going to be an amazing series as well. Like I said before, the Western Conference is going to be great basketball, great playoff basketball, the whole playoffs. And this series no doubt is one of the reasons why. Obviously, a couple years ago, this series would have been the most anticipated had Russ went to LA and KD had gone to the Suns originally after leaving OKC. So that storyline is a bit stale, at least to me. Nonetheless, it's always fun to see these two battle because they're two of the most competitive players in the league and they're always going to do that. PG is out for the whole series, so it's mostly going to be on Kawhi to lead the Clippers, which obviously we've seen him be able to do. Phoenix doesn't have anyone to go him while I think he could be the primary guy that's on KD or even Booker now whichever one he's not guarding they're gonna get theirs because PG is out now if PG was here it would be a lot easier for me to say that the Clippers would take this series and play the Nuggets in the second round but without PG it's hard for me to say that because I feel like there's gonna be one or two games where the Clippers can't overcome a bad rest game and it's gonna suck because that's gonna have the Suns winning in six it's it's gonna be to their demise that's not to say Russ sucks because Russ does not suck but Russell Westbrook has his moments he has his times in games and those are the times that you can't really overcome it and you tend to lose one or two games and I think that's gonna happen to the Clippers and in the second round we're gonna get Denver versus Phoenix and Golden State against LA now in the Denver series the Suns Nuggets series is gonna be a tough one to call because part of me it feels like the Suns health will become a concern and if that happens I think no I know Denver they're probably gonna win the series especially if MPJ can hold his own against KD unfortunately though I'm one of those that think the Suns health is gonna stay intact I think they're gonna win this one in seven because they have a lot of firepower and the guys that normally get hurt in Booker CP Aiton whomever they're not going to have to do as much with a guy like KD on their team. I think the Nuggets will end up being out coached because Monty Williams is an amazing coach while Mike Malone really isn't. And that's going to ultimately be why they lose this series above all else. We already know the narrative will be that Jokic came up short, didn't deserve MVPs, and all this other slander towards him. But to me, I believe it's going to be on Mike Malone and not any single player on Denver's team. And that's whether they lose in the second round or the Western Conference Finals. At the bottom of the bracket, we're going to have the Warriors and Lakers meeting each other. Again, I think the Warriors go to seven games again. And like I said before, their horrible road record, it's much to do with that. And a road record, to me, it's very important when you're dictating and determining who's going to be a championship team and who isn't. If you weren't a good road team in the regular season, you for damn sure are not about to be a good road team when the playoffs start, when basketball gets harder, really. Now, the Warriors, they still do play some of the highest IQ basketball in the league, and though they haven't been the same, these were the same things we were saying last year. And though they made it to the top, they made it to the end, the Warriors, they're at the point where they've gained my trust more than my own team has after this decade and a half of domination i think the lakers will win two or three games off of a big ad game big lebron game but i think when it gets to seven it's gonna be one of those games that they're battling back and forth all game but the way the lakers close games or lack thereof i should say in important moments it has me leaning toward golden state especially with how they finish games in the latter half of the year now it might be a different story if the lakers played at home for the first two games being that they would have momentum being up 2-0 that quick and i do trust the lakers to get one Golden State, but they don't. Therefore, I have Golden State in seven. This leads up to a matchup between the Warriors and the Suns in the Western Conference Finals. And honestly, the NBA, they should just make me a scriptwriter for the narrative, storylines, all that, because 
This this is a crazy one. KD goes back to Golden State. The Warriors beating KD shows them that he needed them more than they needed him. And the Suns, they have their absolute best shot at a title right now. I know depending on the Suns' health is a major caveat. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep mentioning it. Because every team, they have their flaws even if they're a contender. But I don't think their health is going to really come into factor too much with how much and how well they've rested. And I think KD and Book will be a little too much for Golden State to handle. So with Andrew Wiggins back, they will look a lot better. But one does have to wonder where his endurance will be after such a long hiatus. And as much as I'd rather see Golden State win, I think the Suns will be a little bit too dominant against a team that is questionable whether Steph is going or not. We've seen them lose in a game where Steph scored 50, so it makes it much, much harder for me to say that Steph is going to carry, is going to get them there. Honestly, Wiggins, I need to see it. I need to know where he's at. Now, hopefully, I'm wrong. I, I want to be wrong in this. I'm not even going to lie to you. Hopefully, Wiggins will have shaken the rust off by this point, and the Warriors do what they need to do, but... I can't call that yet. I haven't even seen Wiggins play. I haven't seen what he looks like with all this time missed. So I got to go with Phoenix on this one. And they're going to take it in seven. That's all I got for you guys with my Western Conference predictions. Like I told you guys before, I am dropping the Eastern Conference directly, directly after this one. So by the point you get to the end of this video, the Eastern Conference video has dropped already. Go ahead and check that out. Let me know what you think. And until next time, it is your boy TB with the greatest hoop stories and debates on the tube. And as always, I am out. Peace.